What causes insulin resistance to develop in the body? How long does it take? And can you reverse insulin resistance? In this video, we're gonna cover all that and it's gonna be one of the most important videos you've ever watched. Let's get right into this. My name is Ben Azadi. I'm the best-selling author of four books, including Keto Flex. I'm the founder of Keto Camp. You know, insulin resistance and type two diabetes is near and dear to my heart. I lost my dad from the complications of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes back in 2014. And here's the wild thing about insulin resistance. It could take 5 to 15 years before your doctor even diagnoses you. And by that point, it's developed into type 2 diabetes. And type 2 diabetes leads to other nasty health conditions like heart disease, amputations, strokes, infections, and kidney disease. But like Einstein said, intellectuals solve problems, geniuses prevent them. My goal with you right now, by the end of this video, is for you to be empowered and be a genius so you can be proactive, not reactive. Let me give you an example of how insulin resistance develops in the body with this analogy. Let's say I listen to music. I put on the headsets, on my phone, I'm listening to music, let's say at 50% of the volume. But I listen to that music all day long, 24 seven, as I'm sleeping, as I'm walking my dog, all day long, at 50% volume. After about a month or so of doing that, that 50% volume is gonna sound a lot less than what it did on day one. So what do I do? I increase the volume on my phone to 60%. Listen all day long, but after a month, that volume feels like it's dropping down as well. So then I go to 70% and then 80%. Now what's happening to me? My ears are becoming deaf to the screams, to the volume. So I have to keep increasing the volume. This is the same thing that is happening with insulin resistance. The average American is eating 300 to 400 grams of carbs per day. When you eat that many carbs and when you eat it frequently throughout the day, you're pumping out insulin from your pancreas all day long. Compare that to the volume in my headset. So what happens, your cells, which need to receive the signal of insulin delivering glucose to your cells, become resistant to the screams. It's like me having my fingers in my ears. I can't hear you. I'm deaf to your screams. Your cells are becoming deaf to the screams of insulin. So you have to pump out more insulin, AKA increase the volume even more. And you just become more deaf and more deaf. This is insulin resistance. And not only is the average American eating 300 to 400 grams of carbs per day, there was a patient population study done by my colleague, Dr. Don Klum, which showed that the average American is also eating 17 to 23 times per day. But Ben, how is that even possible? Are you making that number up? Think about it. The sip of kombucha, the handful of almonds, the protein shake, and those are healthy examples. But every time you raise glucose and insulin, that is a meal to the body, and that will lead to insulin resistance type 2 diabetes, and a whole host of other health conditions. Let's relate that to some research out there by Dr. Unwin on what people are eating on the standard American diet. Check this out. This is gonna blow your mind. Now, how much sugar does the body want in order to function optimally? The optimal levels of sugar in your bloodstream is only one teaspoon in your entire bloodstream, which equates to 80 milligrams per deciliters. You do have reserves in your liver and muscle cells. Liver muscle cells could store about 25 to 30 teaspoons, which is about 100 to 120 grams of sugar. And skeletal muscle could store about 100 teaspoons, which is about 400 grams. Of course, that varies depending on how much muscle you have, how big you are, how small you are, etc. But anything more than that is going to be packed away in body fat. And let's face it, the average American has too much body fat. And that's the problem, insulin resistance. Insulin is the only fat storage hormone in your body. The more insulin you produce, the more weight you gain, and the harder it is to get off that weight. So if you think about what people are eating on the standard American diet, this is gonna blow your mind. This is research from Dr. Unwin. Let's say somebody had an acai bowl, which people think is a superfood. Let's say they had that for breakfast. That is 117 grams of sugar in one acai bowl. What about orange juice? 16 ounces of orange juice, is 52 grams of sugar. Let's say they went to Starbucks and got a frappe. That equates to 11 teaspoons of sugar in that frappe. A can of soda, nine teaspoons of sugar. Now you can see how this adds up, especially when the person is eating all day 
long. So the solution is to dial down the music, meaning lowering your carbohydrate intake, lowering your meal frequency, meaning how much you eat, the frequency of how much you eat, and increasing fat and protein, especially dietary fat. When you think about the three macronutrients, carbohydrates, fat, and protein, carbs will spike insulin the most. And of course, not all carbs are created equal, but every carb will get you a glucose and insulin response. Protein does have a minor insulin response, but it's considered a phase two, not phase one. Just think of that as a smaller response. Fat, dietary fat, does not touch the dial on insulin. That's why we want to increase healthy fat, increase healthy protein, and dial down your carbs. I hope that makes sense. Please share this video with somebody you know who has insulin resistance and diabetes. If this video was valuable to you, consider hitting the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel. If you missed a previous video that I did on the best foods to eat to reverse insulin resistance, stick or tap the video on the screen right now, watch that video, and go check out BioCoach's Diabetes Remission Program app and all the resources they have. We'll drop a link for them down below. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.